can wallow you hours You can talk in tongues Throw your promises, baby Till kingdom come Catch your bread upon the water See what it may bring Desperate men Do desperate things Come on over here baby Talk big and be brave It's not your only reputation You're trying to say had you under observation You're into various pain Desperate men Do desperate things Come on out of your daydream Go some other place Wipe the tears from your eyes Wipe the smile from your pretty little face Boy, you lose another lover To the night and to the rain This written man Sitting next to Barney Graham. This is hollowed ground. Uh, I've been coming up here for quite a while now. I had to learn the story myself. In 1932, uh, Barney Graham was the union president of the Ventures County Coal and Coke Company that controlled the mines up in this area. And uh, I, I believe, and I'm not positive, and, and it's hard to research, but I think he was the only union president they ever had. And. Uh, from my understanding, from talking to, you know, survivors and people whose fathers or grandfathers would tell them the story about Barney Graham, is that he was, <clears throat> that he was cantankerous and, and moody and, uh, you know, he, uh, he worked pretty hard on behalf of the least among us up there at that time, trying to bring benefits and fair wages and uh, compensation to the to the miners that uh, worked on these mines up here and uh, so many of them that we've talked to even now uh, their relatives were crippled or killed or whatever in the mines and and the level of compensation was was fairly minimal and uh, so Barney Graham took up that cause in 1932, about 31 years after the mining started up here, and uh, he openly advocated for workers' rights and for the and for the improved living conditions for the people that that worked in the mines. So that win. Yeah. April 30th was a Sunday, 1933. While everyone was in church, uh, Doc Green and Shorty Thompson ran into Barney Graham in the streets in Wilder, Tennessee, in the main street. And he was uh, shot 10 times. <clears throat> he was beat, his skull was broken, and he was just generally beat to death, shot to death, stabbed to death, right then and there. I believe he'd been president of the coal mining union for about three days. And uh, after that, um, there was a general period of unrest, and I believe the military was brought in to quiet the miners and either force them back to work or force them off the property. So other people could come in and take their place. And uh, 
you know, it was a hard time. It was a time before any kind of regulations or a time before uh, that the people that did the actual hard work were treated with any respect or like anything but just property or chattel. And uh, uh, I kind of relate to Marty Graham in a way. I mean, certainly I'm, I'm not the mammoth or the person he was, what he was willing to do was pretty incredible. But to this day, if you advocate for poor people on the mountain, for poor southern rural people, um, it'll cause you grief and it'll piss people off. Uh, hard to really understand why, except just the general divisiveness, I guess. But uh, it's amazing to me um, that how people have turned on each other in regard to what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, what kind of behavior is acceptable, and what kind of behavior is not acceptable, and most importantly, which people are uh, worthy and which people are judged unworthy. And I think that's been going on for a long time, and I think that's still going on. On April the 30th, 1933 Upon the streets of water They shot and brave and free They shot my darling father And fell upon the ground T'was in the back they shot him His blood comes streaming They took the pistol handles and beat them on the head. The hired gunman beat him till he was cold and dead. And when he left home that morning, I thought he'd never return. For my darling father, my heart shall live. You rolling? Yeah. Jason, you rolling? All right, Alex. Clap us off. All right. Well, do it again. Do it so we can see it. Go ahead. All right. Y'all know who this is? For those of you that have only heard her, this is Red Hickey, the most famous disc jockey in America. WDBX. We are, we are, we are very, very tight with WDBX. And, and Red is single-handedly responsible for alerting everybody in Knoxville about our festival and getting them to understand what we're doing. And uh, that's not true. Not single-handedly. No, uh, no, 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 no. But. WDVX does love Hippie Jack and what he's doing up here, and we, we want
want to spread the word. We want to bring more people. And are y'all having a good time out there? Yeah. Yeah. You just got to tell more people. Yeah. Right. Well, we just wanted to stand together just for a minute and let you know we'll get started here. We love you. And thank you. All right. Have a good time, y'all. Okay. I love gospel. Self-righteous woman Sunday school teacher What brings you out slumming? Do you reckon the preacher Would approve where you are? Sit
Tom Berry back there on the Hammond B3, folks. Am I impeding progress? Are you sound checked? One more song, what do you think? Give it up real loud.
Anybody's coat chain done hold it in. Mr. Peabody's coat chain done hold it in. Thank you, folks. I can't help but wonder, personally, I have wondered, I guess I wonder, what would have happened if Barney Graham had succeeded in his efforts to uh, in just increase the quality of life and the working conditions for the people working in the coal mines. If all that time ago, which would be, what, 80 years now? Hard to believe. If 80 years ago, uh, the union took hold and, and people began to be treated with respect and be able to provide for their families in a proper way. Uh, where would, be, would we be right now if the, if the script offices had closed and the company housing had been improved and, and if the people, and there were so many people who uh, uh, were, were crippled or, or killed working in the mines and if the situation had been improved to the point where when your father or your uncle or your grandfather is crippled or killed in the mines that there's a uh, there's compensation so in the future that that family is provided for but the fact of the matter is that uh, if your relative if your father or your uncle or your grandfather or whatever was crippled or killed in the mines um, if he was unable to work, he'd soon be evicted and uh, someone new would be moved in. And uh, that's a cycle. It's a cycle uh, that exists still today. And I don't know what it'd take to stop it. I don't know. But there has to be an effort made to serve the people whose ancestors essentially created the Industrial Revolution for this country. I know we weren't the only coal mines, but we were coal mines. And, uh, and I know that, of course, today we view coal mines with, you know, a certain negativity just because of the pollution factor and the fact that, uh, you know, they're environmentally uh, pretty abhorrent. But, uh, None the same. I mean, nonetheless, uh, the ancestors of the people who did the work, who sacrificed and, and gave everything of themselves to work in these coal mines, the ancestors have great pride in that fact. And they will show you their scrapbooks and all the clippings. And, uh, and the fact that, that, uh, that the coal miners were at least by today's standards, they were taken advantage of, um, is a secondary problem. The pride of the work and the pride of the accomplishment and the pride of, of being involved in such a major undertaking, it was a major undertaking back then. Uh, it, it overcomes the negativity for them. And uh, uh, that was something I was surprised to find. You remember when Rosie Lell was elected? Yes, I do. Well, when Rosie Lell was elected, you know, Hoover liked to starve the people to death, you know. And after Rosie Lell was elected, he uh, created little jobs around about, you know. And I can remember that the first job I got for the government she did that was uh, working what they call the NYA. She did and uh, I got a dollar and 17 cents a day. And I'd work a week or two weeks, 20 of us boys would work, I mean other boys, would work two weeks. Then we'd have lay off two weeks and let 20 more boys work two weeks. Then you come back to us again. And I can remember well, and two weeks of pay that I got, that my check was $17.28. And we, we really lived off of it. We survived. It was a hard living, hard to go. We never was plumb out of food. Well, you ain't got no trouble. Yeah, I don't. <laughs>
What do you ever do? If you were. I'm <laughs> down in that fertile ground. And she planted seeds of love down in that fertile ground. Thank y'all very much. I counted it. I saw the sun eight times uh, last month. And um, yeah, I survived. I'm happy to be back on the farm. This is great. All right. This is nice. I'm really looking forward to it. Street light adjusted through the screen door that rusted from the rain. Then washed the welcome man away. She didn't lie, the locks had been. We had it rocked in so long. Will they ever rock in time again? Lord, how I wish they could respond. Then the rain come fall. Reflecting our light The silver clouds just rolling And there's no real way to fight it Blue Clearly outnumbered by the roads of the Rondo Freaking Out. All my cries are no match for the sky. And once again, I fall in short. Then the rain come falling, reflecting our light. The silver clouds just rolling, and there's no real way to fight it. Second grandchild, third, third grandchild. Okay, so are you gonna do the clapper? All right, get over here. Hold it up. Wait a second, turn it around. Watch your fingers. Doesn't really oh, it doesn't really matter, but you know we do what we're told. It looks good. Wait, 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 wait. You got us? You got us, John? No, wait. You got us up there? You got us, Landon? You got me, Siles? All right, now do it. All right, yay! <laughs> God bless grandchildren, right? And Ella. I don't know if Ella's really my grandchild, but she kind of favors me, doesn't she? Say hello. Dad. All right. <laughs> what year is this, 2013? 
Hippie Jacks, Jamming at Hippie Jacks, Fall 2013. It's the most people I've ever seen on a Thursday night for the flea market hustlers. Waiting for a long time. You guys ready? Let's do it. Kick it off. Flea market hustlers. Oh, thank you, people. Oh, we that feels appreciate nice. that. How about a train song, man? How about it? Smoking on black Cadillac with the engine winding down. Park it up on the side, long like he on the whole damn town. I'd hear him talking to some chick through a thick ghost of smoke, and through a thicker haze of southern comfort and coat. He'd say you're hotter than the hinges hanging off the gates of hell. Don't be afraid to turn to me, baby He don't treat you well And by he, he meant me So I laughed and I shook his hand And he laughed a little bit louder As he yelled up at the band Play a train song Pour me one more round Making me my boots on When they lay me into the ground I am a run Locomotive out on the one track of mine And I'm looking for any kind of trouble I can find Black leather jacket I got a pack of marble reds I got this stash here in my pocket I got these thoughts up in my head I got to run until I gotta walk Until I got to crawl And this moment that I'm in right now Ain't nothing else at all Let's train song Pour me one more round Making me my boots on when they lay me into the ground I am a runaway locomotive out on my one track of mine And I'm looking for any kind of trouble I can find And we looked all around his place Saw him cold there on the sofa A little smile there on his face And though I tried with all my sadness I just couldn't weep Before man had looked to me Like he died laughing in his sleep Singing a train song We poured him one last round Made him leave his boots on when we laid him into the ground He was a runaway locomotive out of his one track of mine we play a train song, we play a train song, we play a train song
All right, talk to him for a second. Take okay. Like I said, the ancestors, the survivors of the coal mining days, they still live with the, uh, with the almost a social bigotry of even people in small towns around here. People that live in the in the old coal mining areas or, or just they're viewed with a little fear and a little trepidation and a little, you know, and a lot of downward glances and, and a tremendous amount of judgment for no other reason other than zip code or this is, you know, where they were born and how they were raised. Uh, there was always the thing about the mountain kids in school, and I hear it today. I still hear about the mountain kids and the situation with them. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to prosper, and it's, it's difficult to, to rise above things when, uh, when you're hampered by zip code. So really, as I walked around the cemeteries up here for years, really now, and uh, and you see that from the turn of the century, not <clears throat> the last one, but the one before that, from 1900, really, the coal mines came in at, in 1902, but as you walk through the cemetery, you will quickly notice that at least 50% of the headstones are children under four years old. And uh, if there's a better example of the conditions and of the situation up here, as the mines were in full string, in full swing, and they were <coughs> unregulated, there were repercussions that people just don't even talk about today. And, and that was one of them. And uh, what must it be like to have, uh, to just pretty much know up front that in your married life that half your pregnancies will end up in the, in the death of your child before the age of four. And, and, and what, what would that, what, how do you live with that? And what I've learned from talking to people is it was normal. And the only thing worse than it happening was the normalization of it. <clears throat> and then it, on the other side of it, the great ecological impact that uh, surface mining had on its area up here. And how, even though the last surface mine closed probably in the 60s, Many of the springs still run yellow, and, and many of the little creeks and rivers still run yellow to this day. And uh, I think that's a perfect example of, of lack of regulation. And uh, people, they, they complain about regulation and they want to know why there's regulation. And, uh, and I've, I've thought for a long time now that, uh, that government and government regulation is just a reaction to the failure of the private sector. If the mine owners and the people involved with all that had been responsible, surely they knew somewhere in their hearts that, that polluting the water with mine water and making it unusable and killing all the wildlife and all the fish and making springs undrinkable, surely someone at home office knew this was probably a bad idea. And... Uh, but it was allowed to go on for a long time. And uh, I guess uh, Mother Nature someday will get it fixed. But I kind of wish it was fixed right now. Yeah. Many have gone but not forgotten. What have we got? Is he going to draw have a raffle? Or did you get a new hat? Oh, we got hats. <laughs> oh, John Hartford's hat. We have John Hartford's hat. <laughs> so these are a couple of John Hartford hats here, and I thought it would be perfect for us to be. Uh, See, here's the thing: things. what we find out immediately is the lesson is our heads are much bigger than John Hartford's. <laughs> Your door is always open and your path is free to walk.
walk That makes me tend to leave your sleeping bag rolled up and stashed behind my couch It's knowing I'm not shackled by forgotten words or bonds Or the ink stains that have dried upon some line On the back roads by the rivers of my memory Keeps you ever gentle on my mind It's not clinging to the rocks and ivy Planted on the columns now that binds me Or something that somebody said Because they thought we fit together walking Is knowing that the world will not be cursing and forgiving As I walk along some railroad track and find That you're moving on the back roads by the rivers of my memory For hours you're just gentle on my mind Yards come between us, and some other woman's crying to the mother because she turned and I was gone. I still might run in silence, fear the joy might stain my face, and the summer sun might burn me till I'm blind. But not to where I cannot see you walking on the back road by the river.
sense Lord knows I know now when the wind Shake my head and I wonder how I'll ever get to heaven now But I'm older now I get tired some I know what days are Heaven sent Lord knows I know not Where they went Shake my head and I wonder how I'll ever get to heaven now Song so tonight. <laughs> I don't even know it, <laughs> I don't either. All right, uh, let's get that Bluegrass National Steel guitar out one more time. Thank you all. Thanks for hanging in there with us tonight. Appreciate that a lot. Thanks to everybody here, the whole crew, Jack, everybody here for the hospitality. We appreciate it very much, very much. Uh, and. Uh, we got one more for you. Oh, this is another about a guy who got in trouble in Memphis. And now he's in jail. So let's hear what they got to say about him. <laughs> perfect. Just as always. Perfect. perfect? Yeah, always perfect. <laughs> it's a banjo. It's always perfect. <laughs> Sorry. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four.
that I could not pay. Said, walk right, you'll soon be home. Cross the line and you're on your own. For today's a shotgun. Breakfast on the ground Work like hell till the sun goes down For today's A shotgun and barbed wire fences For tonight's a set lesson To the midnight train of the You know, you got families and kids and stuff, you know, and boy, it's awful damn quiet out. Hey, Jack, you know, what's wrong? And uh, so we, uh, I had a, uh, another good idea was, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, only got about three of them, and I use them a lot. But... Uh, Okay, so things were getting kind of tight one day around the house. I said, okay, let's have a sing-along. And so I said, oh, everybody said, sure. And they got real excited, and we all gathered around and said, we'll sing on top of old Smokey. Said, oh, cool. So, and, uh, and my wife lived in Chicago for a while and here and there, and from Pensacola, so, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a universal kind of a thing. Would you, ain't it? You guess my foot? You reckon right? And uh, so we said on top of old Smokey, and then things got tight. Tur, tighter. So couldn't remember all that damn rest of the words of that one. So. Then we started playing April Fool's Day. And little boy, man, once them little lights start blinking, that's cool. But then it turns into straight neon, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, how come lights over there, they're just, no, I saw that one blink. Cool. And, uh, uh, but so, yeah, you know, once you catch on to a good idea, like, hey, you know, no school tomorrow, April Fool. <laughs> 
So, and he started retaliating and, and very quickly and a lot for a long time. So I said, I better get out of the, get out of the storm and uh, wag my tongue somewhere in the breeze outside. So come up with this little ditty. Who's gonna love me, Lord, when I'm old? Cook my supper and sweep the floor. I'm a one of a kind, Lord, a jealous soul. Spoiled rotten, ready for more. Well, you're the only one who's ever loved me true and kind. Cover my ears to the pain of you leaving me behind. I've been singing old smoky songs, I've been laughing out loud Playing those games we used to play There's always been nobody but me and you There's always been somebody gone You're the only one who's ever loved me true and kind Cover my ears to the pain of you leaving me behind. Yeah. Who's gonna love me when I'm old? Lord, if you let me live, rock my cradle, hold me close. Jesus loves me, this I know And I know, cause my mama told me so Born into this world for a little while One day I'm gonna let down and leave you with a smile You're gonna love me when I'm old Lord, I know, cause my mama told me so One day you're gonna put me down, lay me on a smile. You're gonna love me when I'm old. Lord, if you let me live, my mama told me so. My mama, Lord, plan that flesh hard, come sit by my side if you love me. Do not hasten to bid me adieu. Just remember that Red River Valley And the sweetheart that loved you so true mm. The t-shirts are $15 and there is shipping and handling. I'm sorry about that, but we're, we're trying to just stay above board and they're high quality and they're 100 percent cotton right and they're properly sized people ask me if they're properly sized and i i believe they are i'm an xl all day long and uh, we're in the middle of a reorder right now uh, go to www.jamminadhibbyjacks.com and uh, go to donate and it'll show you in the shopping. Oh, do we have hats? Oh, we have hats now. What else do we have? No, it just says... Just the logo? Yeah. We have Hippie Jack hats that we just put up. And we have... Oh, do we have festival t-shirts we're putting up? And posters and all that? Past ones. Past ones, yeah. yeah. We can't have future ones yet. <laughs> uh, bumper uh, stickers. Bumper stickers. Is that right? It says Hippie Jack. All right. All right. So apparently there's all kinds of stuff on the website now. I guess our choice was, well, I guess we got lazy doing the festival and then we had everybody paid for the rest of the year, so we were good. And see, when we do that, when we do that, and I, I mean, I, I, I feel like this is important. If indeed we can have the festival or TV show or radio show or whatever, and that covers the expense of the people that are doing the work for the outreach. And there's more to it than you think. Um, 
Then 100% of what comes in, people earmark, and we ask them to, their contributions. And if they want it to go straight to the mountain, just earmark it. And uh, we're 100%. Damn, it's nice up here. So is there anything that you would like to add to this or you would like me to add to this in ways of encouragement? Our community gardens are doing great. I mean, we are able now to, so far, for right now, hire people off the mountain, let them do what they do best, and they're excellent gardeners. And, uh, and then also, let them, you know, they're there and they can help distribute the food and we can just give the food. And, uh, you know, it's pure, man. Grow it and give it. I don't see that it can get any better than that. But that's all part of it. And uh, so I don't know. Are we saints? Well, I am. But I have bad days. I don't know. The rest of the crew, it's hard to say. Two parts religion, three parts sin. It's the true the consequences. You know the new king reigns. Desperate men do desperate things. You can water with your hours. You can talk in tongues. Desperate.